the holy island of Lindisfarne, off the northeast coast of England, also known as Holy Island. It has a recorded history from the 6th century and was an important center of Celtic Christianity, especially under Saints Aidan and Cuthbert. After Viking invasions and the Norman conquest, a priory was re-established. Later, a small castle was built to protect the island. It is an island, but at low tide it can be reached by a causeway. Warning signs urge visitors to check tide times carefully and include a graphic illustration of what can happen. The island of Lindisfarne appears under the old Welsh name Medcott in the 9th century Historia Britonum. And experts have proposed that the name derives from Latin Medicata Insula or Healing Island. Some say because the island has some medicinal herbs but it's far more likely due to the miracles of the saints. The name Lindisfarne has an uncertain origin. The first part, Lindis, Celtic, meaning stream or pool, as there is a small lake on the island. The second element may come from Farren, meaning land. This appears to be the origin the Isle of Arran in Scotland being derived from the same word. There's a tradition in the northeast of England of fishermen using redundant herring boats as storing sheds for their nets and equipment. Holy Island is one of the few places where they remain in abundance. The upturned boats are covered in tar for waterproofing and certainly have character. The castle is now run by the National Trust. This area was once a very volatile border area between England and Scotland, and also frequently attacked by Vikings. The castle was built in 1550. Around that time, the priory went out of use, and stones from the priory were used to build it. It's very small and sits on the highest point of the island, a hill called Beblo. The island measures 3 miles by 1.5 miles and is about a thousand acres and a mile from the mainland. The island, as of 2011, had a population of 180. The village is a pretty village, with restaurants, coffee house, a couple of pubs, and is a quiet haven, especially when the tide comes in. Lindis Farn is well known for mead, an alcoholic beverage made with fermented honey, which some say is the ancestor of all fermented drinks. The parish church of St. Mary the Virgin, the priory and the monastery are closely situated. When the Normans rebuilt the abbey, the site was moved and the original site of the priory church was redeveloped in stone as the parish church, making it the oldest building on the island that still has a roof. The monastery of Lindisfarne was founded in 634 by an Irish monk, St. Aidan, who had been sent from Iona, off the west coast of Scotland, at the request of King Oswald, and he remained here until his death in 651. St. Cuthbert, patron saint of Northumberland, was a monk and later abbot of the monastery and his miracles and life are well documented. 
He later became Bishop of Lindisfarne, and an anonymous life of Cuthbert, written in Lindisfarne, is actually the oldest extant piece of English historical writing, written between 685 and 704. The site of the church is the oldest site on the island. Inside, a wooden sculpture called The Journey by Fenwick Lawson represents the removal of the body of St. Cuthbert. When Vikings were coming to attack Lindisfarne a second time, monks carried his body to safety and eventually after many years, he was buried in Durham Cathedral. Parts of the Saxon church still exist as the chancel wall and arch. After the Reformation, the church slipped into disrepair, but was restored in 1860. Today, it's a beautiful place of worship. It's built of coloured sandstone. The North Isle is known as the Fisherman's Isle and houses the altar of St. Peter, the beautiful stained glass windows depicting biblical scenes. One impressive feature of the island is its preservation. Obviously, great care has been taken to maintain the authenticity of this historic and revered location. Surely one is surrounded by history, but also peace pervades the island. One might even say it's holy. One can imagine the pilgrims come into these shores a thousand years ago, leaving footprints in the sand that would be gone by the time they returned, washed away by the waves of time that still caress these shores. And still the pilgrims come. Already on Exion.org, Burma, Kashmir in India, ancient Xi'an in China, historic Jerusalem, wonderful Copenhagen, majestic Ladakh, magnifico Barcelona, memories in London, Venice, and a hundred more. Take a look.